Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of strength of materials. In this session, I am going to discuss a derivation of elongation of tapering rod. There are two derivations under this heading. One is for a circular cross section as you can see here. In the next lecture, I will discuss about a rectangular cross section. So let's get started with the first one. Here you can see a tapered bar. I call it as AB. The length of the tapered bar is L. The diameter at one end is D1 and the diameter at the other end is D2. You can see there is a tensile load applied P from both the sides. Now there is a very simple technique which we use in mathematics that is for a particular specimen or object that we have, we divide it into infinite number of small strips, we take out a small strip from it, study for the small strip. Whatever elongation I'll get for the small strip, I will integrate it over the entire length and I'll get the value for the entire body of elongation. Here, let me choose a small strip at a distance x from the end A and the thickness of the strip is dx. Here, you can see the diameter is d. This diameter is projected here and I have drawn the cross section at a distance x from the left end A. Let the Young's modulus of the tapered bar be E. So, this is an assumption that I make. Now, we will start with a particular term which is called as a change in diameter. As you can see, here the diameter is D1 and at this end the diameter is D2. So, if I have to calculate the change in diameter, over the entire length L, it will be d1 minus d2. This is the change in diameter. Suppose if I have to calculate the rate of change of diameter, over this length L, let me call it as k. This will be d1 minus d2 as you have just seen divided by the total length. So, this is the rate of change of diameter. I have a tapered bar over here and I will assume that the system is linear. So I will say that the value of k or the rate of change of this diameter over the length at any distance will always remain k. Now here I will just find one particular term which is d2. You can see here therefore kl will be d1 minus d2 just by cross multiplying. Therefore if I want to calculate d2 d2 will be d1 minus kl. I am just finding this value. I will show you at the end where I am going to use this. As of now, I will calculate the rate of change of the diameter over length x. First, I calculated over the length l, which means the total length of the bar. Suppose if I have to calculate up to x, then the initial diameter is d1 and here the diameter which I see is d. So, this term will still remain k and it will be d1 minus d upon x. Let me just rearrange this again. I will get therefore kx is equal to d1 minus d. If I have to calculate an equation for d, it will be d1 minus kx. So, I will show you where I am going to use this term d again. Now, suppose if I want to calculate the area at a distance x, at a distance x, suppose if I calculate the area, area of the cross section at a distance x. Say I call it as A, will be pi by 4 d square because this is the diameter at a distance x. I just found d is d1 minus kx. So, I will just write it as d1 minus kx the whole square. Now, for the small strip which I have assumed, let me say that the elongation is delta L of strip. We have already seen the formula of delta L is P L by E A. E and A, I am just writing. The length of this small strip, you observe here, the length is dx. 
so i will be writing here p into dx upon ea the load is still p i have assumed young's modulus as e and a is the area i will substitute area from here i get p into dx upon e into pi by 4 d1 minus kx the whole square this 4 will be multiplied here so i'll get 4 p dx upon e into pi into d1 minus kx the whole square so i get the delta l value for the strip as i've told you that once i calculate for the strip if i want to calculate the value of change of length for the entire tapered body i'll do a very simple calculation that is total elongation over entire body say i call it as delta l will be integration of delta l of all such small strips between 0 to l now where do i get this 0 to l if you observe this length at end a the value of x is 0 and at b my value of x is l so i am going to write over here from 0 to l so let me substitute i get integration of 0 to l 4 p dx upon pi into e into d1 minus kx the whole square 4 p pi and e are all constants so i will have integration of 0 to l dx upon d1 minus kx the whole square this is delta l now i have to integrate 1 upon d1 minus kx the whole square i'll show you a small integration See, I have to integrate 1 upon x square dx. This will be x raised to minus 2 dx. I know the formula of x raised to n integration is x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 plus c. I am not going to use the term c, it is constant of integration because I do not know any boundary condition over here to substitute and calculate the value. It is not of importance, only this much part is important to me. So, when I calculate x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 for this term, I will get x raised to minus 1 upon minus 1, which means it is minus 1 upon x. Here, if you observe, my term is 1 upon d1 minus kx square. So, assuming this entire term as x, I will get 4p upon pi e, it will be 1 upon d1 minus kx. Assuming this is x, so it will be just x in the denominator with a minus sign. Now, if you observe carefully, it is not only x square, d1 is a constant. If I talk about this term k over here, this will go into chain rule. Hence, the derivative of this term minus kx is minus k. So, here I will have to multiply with minus k from 0 to l. Next this negative sign and negative sign gets cancelled. So, what I get is 4p upon pi e, k is also a constant, so I will remove it outside. So, what I get is 1 upon d1 minus kx from 0 to l. Now, let us substitute the term l and 0 as the upper and the lower limit. So, here I will get therefore, delta l is equal to 4p upon pi e k into 1 upon d1 minus k l upper limit minus substitute the lower limit over here. So, it will be 1 upon d1 minus 0 because k into 0 is 0. So, this will be 4p upon pi e k 1 upon d1 minus k l minus 1 upon d1. Now, if you look here, I will be substituting a term d1 minus kl as d2. So, here I get 4p pi e k 1 upon d2 minus 1 upon d1. Let us cross multiply. I get 4p upon pi e k d1 minus d2 upon d1 d2. 
I will be substituting another term of k which is d1 minus d2 by L. So, here I get 4 p upon pi e d1 minus d2 by L into d1 minus d2 by d1 d2. If you observe this term gets cancelled. So, what I get is 4 p L upon pi e d1 d2. This is the formula of elongation for a circular cross section tapered bar. Now, after this, I will take up a numerical based on this formula. Let us see this numerical. A rod which tapers uniformly from 40 mm diameter to 20 mm diameter. So, the data given is initial diameter is 40 mm and D2 is 20 mm in a length of 400 mm. So, the value of L is given as 400 mm is subjected to an actual load of 5000 Newton. So, the value of P is given as 5000 Newton. If E is 2.1 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per mm square, find the extension of the rod. So, this term tells me that I need to use the formula which I just derived. So, to find delta L which is the extension of the rod. Solution is very simple. I will use the formula delta L is equal to 4 P L upon pi E d1 d2. So, I get 4 5000 L is 400 pi E d1 is 40 d2 is 20. When you substitute you will get the value of delta L as 0 0.015 mm. I hope you have understood the derivation and the numerical. If you have any doubts or if you want me to solve any numerical, write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon for latest updates of my videos. I will see you in the next session with the second part of this derivation for a tapered bar with rectangular cross section. Thank you.